Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today I have a Spring Gnome Slimline card for you and the products that I'm using to do this are the Spring Gnomes stamp set by Simon Says Stamp. I am also using the uh, Sizzix Thinlets called Funky Foliage and there are 16 dies in that set and then the Trinity Stamps uh, Slimline stitched card panels okay and so i'm saw this technique with putting the the quarter inch uh um, painter's tape and making sections i think on tafelberry lane uh she does some very good videos so if you don't uh, know her channel i i highly recommend her channel but anyway so i wanted to try this technique and i wanted to use my spring gnomes so um and these new slimline card dies that i got so i tried i wanted to give this a go i did make a few mistakes on this card um the biggest one was with my card base i did my card base at seven and a half by nine and a quarter and i should have done it at seven by nine and you'll see why later when you see the finished i have I, what I think is way too much white space around, um, you know, my, my main panel, but, um, I'm going to go with it. I'm sure somebody will enjoy this card anyway. So, um, seven by nine, that should be your, your, uh, card base for your slimline cards. So when you score it, they are three and a half by, uh, nine. Okay. This funky foliage goes so well with these gnomes. I, I really had a lot of fun uh, cutting out all the little pieces and everything and putting them together. The little mushrooms are just so totally adorable with the gnomes, but there's a lot of die cutting. So th this card did take a while, as you can tell by the longer time on this video. I sped it up as much as I thought was appropriate for you to still be able to see the process and um you know cut down the time or else we would have been here for a very long time together i think i had about an hour and a half or so of video footage when i started and i got it down to a little over 21 minutes so a lot of speeding up to do so i just dug in my scrap bin and uh, my scrap bin consists of nina desert storm you see that and a, a bunch of different simon says stamp card stocks to to cut out all my little uh, funky foliage pieces. Okay, so while that's showing, I will talk about my mistake number two, which for some people probably won't be a mistake. Um, I don't ink blend well, uh, especially on Nina. Now on uh, Bristol Smooth, I look like a champ at it, but on the Nina, um, not so great at it, but I stamped everything on Nina because I was going to be Copic coloring the gnomes. And so I usually Copic color on Nina 80 pound cardstock. So in hindsight, I wish I would have uh, just stamped on the Bristol. So my ink blending would have been more smooth, but I kind of, maybe it's a cloudy sky and it's just some white clouds floating in the sky that gives the light and darks. And that's what I'm going to go with. Um, but think about, you know, your whole process of what you're going to do, you know, uh, the ink blending and coloring and stuff and, and really decide what, you know, uh, medium that you need to use that will work best with all the things that you plan on doing before you start stamping. So, oh, uh, just a little piece of advice there. Okay. So now back to our funky foliage. I uh, just about got everything cut out and then I will use my uh, Zig two-way glue pen to glue all of our little pieces and parts together. And these are, are totally adorable. It, you just glue them together, they're totally adorable. But I wanted to um, grunge them up a bit. So I just got out my Distress inks and I used my regular Distress inks, not my Oxides because Distress inks are transparent and, and so you, you don't, you really, you know, alter 
you know, your image too much, you just kind of grunge it up where the oxides are more opaque and it would just kind of totally change the way the things look. So, um, to do this kind of thing, you want to use the distress inks for that. And to do that blending, I just used a small, a blending brush. Now the set of blending brushes that I have are, they're basically makeup brushes that I found on Amazon. They sell a set of a, a 10 or 12 brushes for like $15. Uh, not real sure right now if that kind of thing is, sh is shipping under current uh, conditions in the world. But um, it is a, a lesser expensive alternative to the craft blending brushes. Where the then the craft blending brushes may be a bit softer, but they're pretty comparable and for the price uh, difference I I would definitely go for the the makeup brushes now you may ask how do I know this if I have the makeup brushes well I have gotten um, one or two of the craft brushes in card kits so uh, that is that's how I know I compared them when I, I got them and said uh, the only thing that I found is just they're a bit softer but um, overall they give the same kind of, of look so um, save yourself some money on those that's what I would say okay so while I finish getting these together and do the ink blending on them see so let's just do a little catch up um, well it is pouring down rain again here in North Texas today um, which is a bummer because we had had several days of fairly good weather so I was able to get out and get some pasture mowing done over at the ranch but um, there still was a lot of water standing and when I was mowing the back side of the of the pond um, yeah that was a muddy mess but anyway got it got that mowed but I still have one more big section that I want to mow and I don't mow the back tin um, for most of the year because I don't want to mow down any of the wildflowers or anything else that's blooming and stuff um, out there because that's our main feeding ground for our bees so um, I, it's a, probably about 12 acres um, that I'm a well the house sits on two acres and Mario mows that so I will say probably I mow it probably about 10 acres ish um, on the tractor and that uh, it is very rough because it used to be a cattle ranch and and so all the, you know, cows stomping around, they make for pretty rough ground. And so I have to go uh, pretty slow. So I have spent this week probably uh, seven to eight hours mowing. And I probably have another three hours of mowing that I need to do. But it torrentially rained just a few minutes ago. So I will have to wait a few days of good weather to see if that will dry out and hopefully we won't get any more rain before that happens and I can get that last section done but I do know we have more rain in the forecast for the middle of the week so we'll see how that goes but yeah um, mowing's not too bad uh, I mean you know we got a nice tractor it's enclosed I have air conditioning and I have a radio but it still can be a, a little boring just, you know, sitting there uh, riding around. But, um, you know, not too bad. Sometimes I talk on the phone or um, last year or during the summer, the the birds would come and, and feed off of whatever you were um, disturbing in the grass, whether it's insects or uh, other small things. And uh, so that was kind of cool to watch all the birds follow you around. But uh, they haven't really come yet this year because we're still keep getting cold fronts and so a little on the cool side. And so the, the birds, those birds haven't really come around much yet. But it did um, scare up some bunny rabbits out of the tall grass and some mice. Um, but that that's all I saw. Thank goodness I did not want to see anything else like snakes or large rats or any other creature. Um, also, I did mow down to the bees and around their hives and things, and uh, all the hives appear to be active and out enjoying 
the new wildflowers and things. Um, I do need to get with my bee guy and have him come out to treat for mites. And we need to go through the hives and see which ones that he thinks is strong enough to put the honey supers on. I probably should have had them on a couple of weeks ago, but like I said, it's just been cold and, and rainy and you don't really want to open up your hives during, you know, those kind of conditions because uh, the bees don't like the rain and they don't like the cold. So um, behind on getting that done, but hopefully I'll get that done in this next week and I will have a significant amount of honey come uh, mid-July. Our honey flow is, is quite of a short season here in North Texas because we get such, you know, uh, high heats in, you know, July and August that most of the, you know, the wildflowers and stuff die out in, in July. And also this thing uh, does bloom out called um, snow on a prairie and snow on a prairie will make your, your honey spicy and a little funky tasting so um yeah so pretty much uh the first of april through the first of july is about when you get um your your good time to get collect honey now the bees can can collect the snow on the prairie and make honey for themselves because they don't have taste buds and they will yeah uh, eat that regardless so they can make that but um you, you don't want to eat that. Okay, I do quickly want to go back to the card and tell you about another little boo-boo that I made. Um, I keep my stick it paper and my masking paper, unfortunately, in the same uh, general area, and I mix them up. So I thought I was grabbing my Simon Says Stamp masking paper, and I grabbed some stick it. So uh, when I peeled off what I thought was the masking paper off my image, there left a whole entire layer of adhesive. So I was like, oh, heck, and I am not starting over now. Um, so I got out my gum eraser and I just used the flat side of the gum eraser, the wide flat side, and just went down the whole image. And it took that uh, adhesive off without really lifting much of the black lines from my stamped image and saved my card. So that was nice. Um, okay, so you can see my ink blending is kind of eh. And what I was, the colors I was trying to mimic was uh, some sunset colors that I saw the other night, which I, I thought to myself when I was outside looking at it, I was like, wow, that kind of looks like um, ripe persimmon and spice marmalade maybe and uh broken china yeah does that's is that kind of weird that i think in distress colors i don't know probably means i craft too much maybe but so i just had i wanted to do those sunset colors and i just thought it was maybe kind of ethereal looking with these gnomes and so i wanted to put them on those colors but i said yeah my uh, ink blending was not that great but I think after it's all said and done, it does turn out pretty cute. I'm overall, you know, pretty happy with the card. Okay, for the Copic coloring, I will have all the colors listed over on my blog post uh, for this video. And that link will be down in the video description below. The Copic coloring I did is pretty basic. I, on these flowers, I did a three color blend and on their shirts and hats, I think a three color blend and, and her hair um, a three color blend, but for the most part, pretty easy, uh, coloring. Now what I wanted to keep the gnomes, you know, pretty, you know, cohesive in, in colors. So I switched their hats and their clothes up, but I didn't want the, the guy gnome to have a, a really bright, uh, coral colored clothes. So I went over the top of it with, um, one of the, the the lightest gray that I used on his beard to just kind of glaze it and uh, tone it down. And so I think that worked and um, I think he looks super cute. And so then to um, do the like the little leaves and stuff on each of their uh, hat and and uh, clothes and stuff and the the bands on her braids, 
I use my Sakura glaze and stardust glitter pens for those details. And I did put a, a few of those details in the flowers and mushrooms with those pens as well. So as far as a winery update, um, so the, the last gentleman that we've been talking to about building that, that wanted to get a new dirt uh, sample and uh, use his own folks that are more familiar with building in our area and in our black gumbo of clay, if you want to call it dirt that we have, um, they, he got the soil report back and is at the engineer. And so we're waiting for that. I'm hoping that this week he will have a report from, from the engineer and we can decide if we can go, uh, with our original Italian villa theme, or if we're going to have to, um, scale back and, and re think, uh, what we're going to do to, um, bring down costs. But, um, the little bit of good news from all this, uh, stay at home quarantining stuff that everybody is going through that some of the building costs have come down. Lumber has come down in price. So that's a good thing, but, um, that is not our hugest cost. Our hugest cost is by far and far and large, the, um, concrete. And so if the price of concrete would come down from all this stuff that we're going through, uh, that would be a silver lining in this uh, dark cloud that we are all living through. So we're waiting to see if that will happen. Okay, so here we go, the magic of peeling off the painter's tape. And so you just want to lay that flat back against your card and pull it away. And that will keep it from, you know, tearing any of your cardstock. Wanted to pop this panel up with some foam tape, so I'm just going to put uh, three strips of that down the back of my card. I'm going to smooth that down really good there with my bone folder, just to make sure it's good in here because all tape is pressure sensitive, so you must smooth down all tape. Uh, so here I decided I needed some grass. So to go, my mushroom looked kind of funny, um, just, hanging there without any kind of grounding. So I put some grass down. Then I'm just going to add some cosmic shimmer glue to glue that down in place. And um, moving along, I needed to ground him down in that little corner. So I just added some darker color there. I will go back and add even more darker uh, grays uh, there to ground him. And I think I'd put a little bit more underneath her to ground her. I wish I'd have done the grass before I would have peeled up the tape, but I was able to clean that up really well with my colorless blender. So I'm just moving along, getting things uh, stuck down in each of the sections. In the top section, I just put some of the, the foliage in some of the flowers. The um, I did put a yellow flower on top of that foliage that I just put on there. And, but then I just put a blue flower and so with, uh, one of my glaze pins, I just drew in a, a stem for it because it kind of looked like it was just floating there kind of weird. And so I just drew in a stem with it with a glaze pin because it glazed her or slightly raised. So it kind of gave it the feel of a, of a stem. So that worked out pretty well. And this cosmic shimmer glue, um, glues on pretty fast. So I just put the block on it for just a couple of seconds and um, then I just move right along to the next thing. Some of the little pieces didn't quite work exactly the way I wanted them to. I wish I would have put this, that green piece of foliage down first before I would put my mushroom down and put him over the top of it, but I didn't. So I just trimmed him off and put the top of it sticking out over the top of the mushroom. And then I'm going to use that, the rest of that piece on the inside of the card. So there I went and drew in a stem. I drew in a stem for that bottom flower as well. And here's where I'm going to go in and, you know, add some other little accents. I, I colored in those uh, dots on that one mushroom with a, a, one of the glitter pins in green and then in yellow went around the circle of that flower and then use my Nuvo Aqua Shimmer pen just to put a little bit of um, glitter gloss on a couple of things, the heart and the mushroom cap. And so for the inside of the card, I'm just going to glue down the rest of these pieces. So that's the piece that I cut the top out of. 
and I will put a, stick a flower in the top of that and so that looks like it belongs really well. I'll glue down this other foliage and flowers and that will finish off the inside of the card. I didn't put a sentiment on the inside of the card so I could just um, use it for a birthday or you know any occasion that, that I wanted to but got the inside of the card decorated with the little flower so I was happy with that. So that pretty much does it for this card. I will have some final pictures at the end of the video and as always I thank you for stopping by and watching. I know this was a long one so if you're still hanging around thank you very much. I appreciate um, you watching, liking, thumbs upping, subscribing, sharing, all that good stuff. It really helps my channel to grow and I very much appreciate it. So I will have some more cards coming this week so stay tuned for those and stay safe and healthy and we will see you soon in the next video. Bye! Mm -hmm.